Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Bold and the Beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Can't believe Finn let Shayla inside their cliff house. Finn is determined to put an end to this once and for all. Steffi advises him to get rid of Shayla if he wants to stop it, prompting him to tell her. Shayla hisses that they have a connection and begs Finn not to do so, saying, don't let Steffi drive your mother away. Deacon is going over paperwork at the bar at Il Dardino when he thinks about Shayla telling him she had to seize the moment. He recalls warning her that Steffi is his true love and Shayla swearing that Steffi will never come between her and Finn again. He turns to find Ridge and Carter approaching him. Twice in one day, he sighs, offering them a romantic table for two. To whom do I owe this joy? Ridge informs him that they will not abandon him. Ridge only wants to chat about his insane girlfriend, despite Deacon's offer of stuffed peppers. Carter tells that Steffi has opted to return to the cliff home, putting her life in peril. They are aware that Shayla is plotting her next move. If she finds out Finn and Hayes are living together, we need to know what you know. Now, Carter says, Deacon is adamant that he has nothing to do with Shayla. Ridge is only concerned with his daughter's safety. She is in danger due to a lady he knows better than anybody else. Ridge, father to father, asks Deacon to let him know if he knows anything. Deacon gives a nod. Wyatt at Spencer Publications is distraught by Steffi's decision to return to the cliff house with the kids. What is she thinking? He exclaims. Liam has no idea, but he's back to fretting about their safety. Wyatt screams that Shada poses a major threat to her and the children. Liam believes Steffi is refusing to let Shayla tear her family apart any longer, but she is putting herself back in harm's way. I can't let that happen. Wyatt informs his brother that Steffi has returned to Finn's home. Is it possible that he is upset that she has reconciled with her husband? Liam is adamant that this is all about safety. Wyatt observes that Steffi's presence at Eric's was ideal for Liam, who desires another chance with her. Finn informs Shyla that she will be unable to attend the cliff house. He only took her in because she arrived up unexpectedly and uninvitedly. Shayla was simply there to see him. Steffi snatched his son and fled, she claims. Finn is irritated that she left because of her. Do not come anywhere near us, Kelly or Hayes, he says, grateful that she spared Kelly. Shayla looks around at Steffi, who is defiantly sticking out her chin. Steffi sneers at Shayla as she continues to work on Finn. Shayla informs Finn that Steffi is using their relationship to obtain what she wants and justify her departure. Steffi exclaims, you've got to be kidding me. Shayla apologizes to Finn for her faults, but he embraces her. They have a link that nothing and no one can ever sever, not even Steffi. The two women exchange glances across the room. Deacon insists that Il Giardino, that he knows nothing about Shayla and has had no touch with her. Ridge, like Carter, does not believe him. Ridge threatens that if he discovers he is lying, they will have a serious problem. Deacon insists he would never compromise Ridge's family's safety. Ridge threatens to make him pay if anything happens to his grandchildren. Liam accuses Wyatt of attempting to convert his worry into a tumultuous love triangle at Spencer. He is very concerned. Wyatt claims he's been very open about his feelings for Steffi recently, saying he'd want to create a life with her and Kelly again, so he must be really disappointed that she's returned to Finn. Shayla tells Steffi at the cliff home that they're both moms and have that relationship with the children they gave birth to. We would do anything, anything at all to protect that life. There is nothing that can take that away, she said of her instinct. Finn steps in front of Shayla and says, you need to go. Shayla reminds him that Steffi abandoned him. Because everywhere I go, you follow me, Finn explains. I'm not going to ask you again, he says, explaining that it stops now leave. He won't let her torture Steffi much longer. Go. Shayla fixes her gaze on Steffi, who averts her gaze. Wet annoys Liam at Spencer by wondering how he ever got Hope and Steffi. Then he claims to be only concerned. Lion reveals he was hoped for another opportunity with Steffi, but if she's going back to Finn, 
that's probably not going to happen. Shayla encourages Steffi not to be afraid of her at the cliff house. She adores Finn and Hayes and simply wishes to be a part of the family. She mentions Kelly and Finn tells her that she doesn't have the right to use Kelly to make them feel bad. They'll never forget what occurred in that alley. Shayla insists she would never intentionally injure him. I love you, she says emphatically. Finn advises her that if that's the case, she should do as he says and walk out that door, never to return. Shayla gabbers, you don't mean that. Steffi, she believes, has influence over him. Finn claims that no one has power over him. He and Steffi are in love, and Shayla has only caused her pain. And promise me that we will never hear from you again. She should leave if she loves him. Steffi sobs while Shayla examines her, then walks to the door and walks out. When they are alone, Finn embraces Steffi and apologizes for what she has gone through. Steffi bemoans the fact that she can never be in the same room as her. Finn informs Steffi that he reached Shayla and that she will never return. Steffi hopes she could, but they both know what she's capable of. You heard her. I love you, Finn, Steffi adds, but I can't do this anymore. What exactly is Eric Forrester up to? Now that Eric Forrester has enlisted grandson RJ to help him with a new design line, Bold and the Beautiful has forced John McCook to the forefront. Eric has informed RJ that he requires his assistance due to arthritis. The mysterious man. But what exactly is Eric going through? Is he genuinely suffering from arthritis? What is the significance of this design line to him? Is he going to recover his Forrester Creations office? Soap Hub polled B and B viewers to find out what they think is going on with the Forrester Patriarch. The rule of Occam's razor. What exactly is Occam's razor? It's referred to as a philosophical tool for shaving off unlikely explanations. In other words, the most likely explanation for what's going on right now is the truth. So if Eric claims to have arthritis, that's exactly what he has. However, only 10% of you believe this to be the reality. Hmm. Eric went on a rant about how his office had been taken over by pretty much everyone in the firm. He noticed Pam and Charlie eating lunch in there as well. According to 14% of you, Eric's displeasure stems from his feeling disrespected. There was a time when his office was considered a sacred area. It's one thing for Steffi to work from there— but it's another thing entirely for other characters to use it as a post-workout locker room. Enough. The remainder of you, almost 76% of votes, feel Eric is involved in something far more serious. He claims to have arthritis, which he most likely has. However, he may have a much more serious health problem. Is he seeking for a way to pull our jade the family business, or is it the other way around? Is Eric attempting to teach Ridge, who disagrees with his father in certain areas, a lesson? Is Eric interested in designing another line to assist Forrester Creations, perhaps because it is in financial trouble? Everything is feasible. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.